It's Thursday again, tell everybody to lock in Grab some popcorn, a drink, and go and throw your AirPods in It's the one hour show, constantly speaking facts Bulletproof stats are always shooting from Matt And when it comes to Kyle, you getting numbers and style Jake is gonna educate you, he has that knowledge on fire Player, step your game up, don't be sluggish or lazy Or Jimmy J might hit you with a shaky baby Catch him on YouTube or any podcast platform Breaking all the news down like Shaq does the backboards No hot takes, this is where the hottest debate's at Now kick your feet up, cause it's time for Straight Facts What's going on y'all? Welcome back to Straight Facts A sports show that educates and entertains presented by the Up On Game Podcast Network. It's your boy, James Jackson. The full roster is with me, as always. Jake Galley, Kyle Searing, Stat Matt Robinson. It's a weird week right now because it's it's the in-between week of Super Bowl week. You right. know, like like the NFC, the, the NFC and AFC championships just happened. The Super Bowl isn't happening yet. Media week hasn't started yet. So we're in like this lumber kind of period, but... Coming off, you know, a, a great championship weekend, which we'll dissect, you know, in a minute. How football is such, like the NFL is the best product, in my opinion, at least American sports. Yeah. How have they not came up with a better concept for the week in between the conference championship? We, and Pro Bowl. we got the Pro Bowl. I have the Pro Bowl. I have like. We got the Pro Bowl. I would rather have like my fingernail pulled off than yeah, watch really. the entire. Slowly. Slowly. Yeah. It's tough. Well, you know what they need to do? They need to bring back that um yeah, that I little know. skills challenge. Yes, the thing skills yeah. challenge. Those yes. were fun. Like Those I don't. Great. Now all they do is what they play like a dodgeball game. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know. It's like and who, and they did that like two years ago. Or something. I, I don't want to get this too derailed, but it just doesn't make any sense. Like who cares about the Pro Bowl? No, it's a good start. The Olympics start. True. Well, actually, that's like true. Tomorrow. But there. we're talking about what is the NFL doing? I know. Like, what, <laughs> <laughs> like every, everything else is, is giving us. At least, things. I mean. This is one in four years where you, there's actually something with the Olympics. That's I true. mean, at least it's slightly better. I mean, NFL, just get your act together in this in-between week. But we'll focus on the last thing that did happen on the field, and that was the conference championship game. Oh, just continues to be cold. Man. With a little bit of help of an ineptitude of the Chiefs, I'll right. say. But – it was, was it, but before we get into any of the stats, before we get any into the facts of this game, was it a Chiefs choke job or is, is Joe Burrow just that cold? It's somewhere in the middle. It's not Joe Burrow. Yeah. But you don't think it's Joe Burrow at all? No, it's, it's the, it's to me, it's the Bengals defense for the Chiefs. And I think it's kind of a, I, I put it on the Chiefs, but the Bengals defense definitely deserves a lot of credit. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that's a good point. The defense was the one thing that stood out. You look at all four sides of the ball, both teams' offense and defense. The Bengals' D is what stood out. But this was a AFC Championship game. This was a football game. You're an athlete. You know when a game gets competitive, you do what you got to do to win. It might yeah, not be absolutely. the prettiest, right? And Joe Burrow kept his cool. He didn't play great, to Matt's point. He didn't go out and he win this game. He threw one pick in the fourth quarter, and then he had another pick dropped in the fourth quarter. He also like, came he, back from down 18. I know, so someone had to do that. But is, he wasn't, like, lights out. He was, right. He was No fine. one was. No one was. No but one was. it's one of those – it's a sports game. Yeah. And it's that the two – "Quote unquote," what they should be—the two best teams in the AFC. That's what the championship game is. They fought. That, that's what you do in a competitive aspect in any sport, right? Now, was it the prettiest? No. Did Joe Burrow lights out? No. Patrick Mahomes didn't either, right? So I, I think the guy that keeps their cool and knows how to go through that—not that Mahomes doesn't—was the one that won and did it better. Yeah. I, first off, we're not going to treat Joe Burrow like he's some Jimmy G out here. No, thank no, you. No, no, thank no, no, you. No, no, we're not going to treat him like you, that. Thank you, Joe Burrow. But, Joe Burrow. Uh, it, it, he wasn't, no, but he's, no, he's, he wasn't any better than like Matt Stafford was. So I, I do think that we should put more stock into what the defense right. did. That was the out, outlier. But we, not uh, Eli Apple. The Bengals We'll defense. get there. Oh, we'll, my gosh. We'll get there. Not we'll Eli there. Apple. He's the worst. Well, or the Bengals Apple defense. didn't make the tackle. He did make the tackle. We'll get there. We'll get there. I just think that, and we talked last week, you know, we we have highlighted all year the sacks, the decision not to pick an offensive tackle. When One sack. When is it wait, when, when is it going to hurt them? Right. What, we're and like calling on it for you know, calling on it for them to hurt it. It, like, go, to hurt by it, it goes to Zach Taylor, Joe Burrow. Hats off to them for not allowing that to wreck the game plan. And we're not going to touch on the Super Bowl, but that'll be another, I mean, once again, another focal point. For the Bengals. And, and well, I, guess, I guess Joe Burrow will keep finding ways to overcome that. But we'll go on both sides of that narrative. First, we'll talk about maybe how did the Chiefs kind of you know choke, choke this game away. But then we'll give Joe Burrow and the offense and their defense credit too. But first, 
we have to talk about how the Chiefs kind of crumble. Crazy. And we're not used to seeing that. So first question is, like, who deserves the most blame in this thing? Is it is it the defense? Is it Patrick Mahomes? Is it the Chiefs as a whole? Is it Andy Reid for the play calling? Like, who, who deserves the most blame in this? I, I think you can justifiably say this is maybe the first time ever in Patrick Mahomes' career that he has lost his team a game. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to say because he's the most talented player in the league. Uh, he's still going to be next year. They'll, the Kansas City Chiefs are still going to probably be the favorite next year, yeah. um, regardless of what happens here. But the way that he played in that second half for the second straight time against this Bengals defense, A, is something to examine if you're another team. B, very staggering and unsettling if you're a Chiefs fan. Yeah, uh, Chiefs oh. scored oh, – sorry, before you go. Chiefs scored just three points in the second half of that game. They went up 21-3 to at halftime and kind of put it in park, kind of put it in, in cruise control. And it bit him. It bit him in the behind. And it's funny because Patrick Mahomes said at the end of their Week 17 loss, they asked, you know, why did this happen? And he said, I think we got too comfortable. I think we got a lead, got too comfortable, let our foot off the gas pedal. And I was so surprised to watch them do it again. Like what? Like I was referencing that the entire time I'm watching this game. He literally said they were they were going to do the exact thing they're doing right now. Um, and they tried to become a running football team kind of midway through that game. And I remember saying, I don't know if the Chiefs know how to do this. I don't know if they know how to let their foot off the gas pedal, control clock, run the football, but still stay in attack mode. And they got outside of themselves. They found themselves in, in, in situations they don't want to be in. Patrick Mahomes takes bad sacks, and all of a sudden, you know, the Bengals are right on your bumper. So it, it, a combination of everything. For me, yeah, for me I, I, it's very close, but I blame Reed more than Mahomes. Just because I, I just look at the – I just look at – when you people have been comparing like will Mahomes ever pass Brady and all this stuff has been was narrative before last Super Bowl. It's been a narrative coming up, and the reason why I just don't think that's possible just from a win standpoint is because the perfect combination of having Belichick and Brady. When Brady would have an off game, Belichick would will them to the win, and Reed is Reed is a Hall of Fame coach, but he when it's he didn't cover for his quarterback who was clearly struggling in the second half with the right play calling. He didn't run the ball a lot in the second half. Uh, the Bengals really did a good job adjusting, and Mahomes was like 0 for 6 with a pick on throws outside the hashes, mm. and it's outside the numbers. And Reed just not seeing how to balance where Mahomes was struggling and get the team to win is just what the thing is. And there's like little stuff like, uh, Kelsey not being on the field on the second and goal at the end of the game. But it's it to me it says that's where a coach has to be a coach and overcome see his player his star player struggling and win it and Reed didn't do it. I mean you get you get kind of spoiled when you've never had to use that muscle in the last three to four years, right? Because he just goes out and makes these crazy plays and wins you the game. But Kyle, blame game. I, I think I think we split it up. Remember what we did with the Sixers after they blew the Hawks series last year? We kind of split it up. Go to put it in the rows. Yeah, who's in front? And, who's in the second row? Who's in the third yeah, row? Now instead of uh, Doc Rivers and Ben Simmons, we're looking at the guys Matt talked about: Andy Reid and Mahomes. Right. Andy Reid's the one you can point a finger out. I'm sorry. You, like, what was it? I don't know what down it was, but five seconds left. You already had taken that shot once. I'm talking about the end of the first half. Mm. You'd already taken that shot once. It didn't work out. Now there's five seconds left. You're up 18. Right, it was twenty-one to three. Go up twenty-one. Go up twenty-one into the half. Yeah. I don't understand that at all. And then, of course, I mean, if you look at the play, why Patrick Mahomes would do anything? That was the first read. Hill was the first read. On why the play. why would he do on. anything except throw the ball to the end zone? Right. So th- there's that. But then you also do look at Mahomes. One point four QBR in the second half in overtime. I mean, for the best, probably people look at him as the best player in the league, if not the best quarterback in the league for sure, is the public narrative. Yeah. I mean, you got to put blame there. I mean, and, and if you want to blame the O-line a little bit, because I had never seen the Bengals' defense play like that, especially the front seven get all that. So there's a lot of things that divvy up. I mean, receiving core did fine. Jarek McKinnon played fine. But those are auxiliary pieces to what the Chiefs do, right? I think We know what their good, offense is. So, I mean, it's – it, it, it was. It's not an all-time collapse, but it's it's the culmination of those things. We're building up throughout the game. You hit that turning point going into the locker room to halftime, and you never come out, and you never get that back in the second half. And it led. To, I mean, you can see it coming. Yeah. Andy Reid special too. 
Like, remember, this happened to them. Against the Titans. Against. In the, Titan, in the wild card round. And the Colts, too. Colts in the wild a while ago round. was the one yeah. that I remember where it's just like crazy collapses. All of this to say, and I just want to, when we talk about blame, when we talk about it's Mahomes' fault, yada, yada, yada. It took them getting three points in eight plays within the five-yard line, four plays at the end of the first half, four plays at the end of the second half. Uh, they end up kicking a field goal, putting it to overtime. But, like, how many times does Kansas City run eight plays within the uh, oh, oh, five-yard line and it, score three three points? I mean, they, they started within the five, and back-to-back pack Mahomes sacks put them outside the 30. That's, right, just, right. that's just terrible offense. <clears throat> and and, and I, I ride with both you and Kyle's points. And Matt, to, to your latter point, I don't think enough blame gets put on Patrick Mahomes, to be honest. Like, I, I for this game, it's hard I to do. No, no, I, I don't hear enough blame <laughs> on Patrick Mahomes for this game. Like, yes, maybe some schemes could get drawn better. But if I have the best quarterback in the world, like, I, I need him to, to not make losing plays throughout the course of the game, especially if I'm trying to hold a lead and stave off a comeback. You know what I mean? Like, and he just put the Chiefs in so many bad scenarios. And when you're, when you're, like constantly dropping back and your first thing to do is, is kind of spin around three times and make a home run hero play. Like sometimes we, so many, so many people have this, this conversation with Carson Wentz where sometimes the best play is to throw the ball away. Not compare him, no, but, 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 try, but trying to hold the ball and make you. this hero home run play every time. Sometimes you have to recognize I don't have the best offensive line in the world. So the ball needs to come out quick. Sometimes I don't have the luxury of running around all over the place and it, to an extent, it makes me think about the Super Bowl last year against the Buccaneers a little bit differently because if you know your offensive line is that battered, people were kind of praising him for running 450 yards in the backfield. And now, you know, seeing it kind of happen again and it be a detriment, it's like maybe he shouldn't have spent all that time running in the backfield trying to evade defenders. Maybe it should have been just stepping up in the pocket. Maybe it should have been getting the ball out quicker. Yeah. Maybe it should have been having better reads instead of trying to – you know, you know, trying to, to overcome it the other way of I'm going to spin out the back door every single try and try to well, throw across my body. It's that, funny you bring up the Super Bowl because that is – it was in the second half super reminiscent of that Super Bowl. Yeah. And we heard earlier in the year, we talked about him earlier in the year. Oh, you know, we, we see coverages that no one else sees. So speaking to that, in the second half, the Bengals dropped eight men into coverage 45% of the time against them. And – when they did that, when they did drop eight men into coverage, uh, they held the Chiefs' offense to 38 net yards on 15 plays. So, like, they're having to bear some of the brunt of the load of, like, yeah, maybe when you are this great, you're you're going to have to be the, the trial and error. You're going yeah. to have to endure the error because there isn't really a playbook on how to beat right, that right. when they're running those schemes. Oh, let, let's, let's just stay on that side perfectly then because we got to talk about the Bengals' side of it too. It's not all just the Chiefs giving it away. The Bengals played one heck of a game – to bring themselves to the Super Bowl, everybody except Eli Apple. So what what did the Bengals do on their side of the, the field? I mean, I can't believe that man, right? Like, like he's the hey, I'll believe him. I'll just, Honestly, I'll believe him, right? Cornerbacks are just built like if you if you're a good cornerback, you have to have a little troll in you. Uh, he's he's saying, who do I hate more, the Giants or you, the Saints? You fans? cannot be that. So, like unaware he's, of yourself, like, he, he can't be that unaware. He was, he was like, on the high of going to the Super Bowl. Nah, he, was, he was, he was riding that win. But no, nah, you're right. He, he wait, did. Wait, but he to, made, to, to, to tweet at them and say like DM me oh, for Super crazy. Bowl tickets, like crazy. he gonna find out he's not that big. Like he, man, crazy. Crazy. Yeah, you know, have paid six K. He's gonna be looking at some Cooper Cup tickets. Yeah, because he really didn't play that well. He did make probably in my mind the second biggest play of the game, whole game. Both plays were made by their defense. The other one being Hubbard, that sack at the right. end to send the game to OT. Well, actually, didn't make Bucker kick it, made it. But yeah, I mean, the Bengals, the one, Mahomes, you can't let him get comfortable in the pocket. James just talked about he did all that running around. Maybe that wasn't the best choice of him, but they forced him to do that, right? They're dropping eight guys back in coverage. They're hiding guys like Hubbard on that blitz as well. Um, or it wasn't a blitz, it was a QB spy, mm. and he made the decision Came to go late, yeah. in blitz. A great decision, straight instinct, right? Mm-hmm. So stuff like that is and, – and Mahomes tried to run around him, and he broke down and made the tackle. So, I mean, a lot of good individual plays for the Bengals, and yes, Eli Apple had one. I agree with you. But everything else, I agree with you saying that, you know, he, he played bad because he, he did. Come on. But everything else on that defense, game plan to execution – was very sound. I mean, not many defenses can make Mahomes look like that. Nonetheless, in the AFC Championship game, 
at Arrowhead. At Arrowhead. At Arrowhead. That's where I was getting there. I forgot the name of the stadium. <laughs> like, yeah, well, I, like... I, I was kind of poo-pooing Burrow, so I just want to walk that back a little bit. You were poo-pooing. Uh, so, Why so, were you poo-pooing? So I just want to – I, I'm just – he didn't play I, – I feel like quarterbacks get too much credit for wins a lot of the time. And Burrow's been good this playoffs. He hasn't been great is basically my point. But what makes a quarterback a really good playoff quarterback is not caring about your most recent throw. Yeah, yeah. Because Burrow – memory. doesn't matter if he th- had a drop pick. On the drive where he had the drop pick – on third down, he escaped the sack miraculously and ran for the first down. The fact that those things didn't phase Burrow the slightest, hitting that third down to T. Higgins that was so crucial to them getting the game-winning field goal after the pick, it's it's those short-memory quarterbacks that always wind up winning in the playoffs, and it's quarterbacks that get in their head that wind up losing. And it, it's great because even when you're making this comeback, you know, you start to feel yourself gaining momentum. And at some point you have to forget the rest of the game. Like, I don't care what happened through quarters one through three. I have an opportunity in the fourth to win this game. So this this is the only part I'm, I'm worried about. It's the only game I'm worried about, the game that I'm about to play right now. I mean, she, she's just icy. And yeah. you, guys, you guys saw the pregame picks. Like, it's, it's on record on the podcast, me <clears throat> saying the Chiefs. Then I watched how this man walked up the barrel head on game day with the Cartier glasses. I said, I have I got, I have to change my pick right here and there for the sake of parody, too. But I was like, I have to change my Nail pick. Nail it. Joe Cool. Woo. And to that point, Joe Cool, he, stay, he stays in the game, collected so game focused. Joe. The only emotion we saw out of him was when the Chiefs won the coin toss and he gave a little, uh, uh. like just a little <laughs> bit inside. But I, I was really impressed. Um, and the stat, this is what I was making that point right at the jump that. He played a good football game. Sometimes yeah. not everything goes well. His mm-hmm. stats weren't amazing, but you still see him in the pocket. One, um, a lot of young quarterbacks, and I think we can take him out of the young quarterbacks and into the best quarterbacks discussion after this season, but a lot of young quarterbacks aren't good at getting to their second, to their third read, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it really didn't have to be Jamar Chase on Sunday. Yeah, on Sunday. CJ Uzama, who has been a great target, probably not hasn't had the most targets on that team, but has been a great He's reliable a six, check down. Game. Got, got out in the first quarter. He's going to Higgins. <clears throat> Tyler Boyd started the game with like four catches before Jamar Chase had one or maybe two. I mean, I, I like how he's getting through his reads, isn't relying on, you know, one receiver to make a play. He's like, oh, you're not open. I'm checking two, three. And that's what mm-hmm. I see out of a 24-year-old quarterback, 25, whatever he is. Second year in the league, didn't even really get a full first season. That's so yeah, impressive. First full season. Which is so impressive. It's impressive. No, it's he's he's. To me, ascended to the very top of this young, you know, next next generation of quarterbacks. Yes. Yeah. All right. Speaking of quarterbacks not developing, probably as they should, Jimmy G and the 49ers lost to the Rams in the NFC Championship game. We're going to move on. Don't talk to about that one. your quarterback next year. Like that. <laughs> yo, that's your yo, guy yo, in Tampa. Yo. I'll take Kyle Trask over him. Man. I really will. <laughs> no, I really you can't will. take Kyle Trask. How do we know? You don't, how do you know? Jimmy Kyle G. Kyle Trask could be good. How Jimmy do you know? G is. That I'm not. I'm not. Uh, yeah, this okay. is this uh, is not what we're going into. Okay. Not gonna, you're not going to trick me into this today. We're going to talk about how he lost in this ugly performance that he put on in the NFC Championship game. The Rams ultimately beat the 49ers. Really good game at the end of the day to go to the NFC Championship game. But it was really like, how did the Rams end up winning this game? Because it, from the beginning, looked like they had it. Then it looked like here comes the 49ers. Oh, the Rams are about to blow it. Sean McVay is about to blow it. Oh. He was. He really wanted to blow that game. I don't know what's Those up with Those challenges were. Like, what is neither that? one made sense. Either one. They have neither a guy. One. They have so, a guy or girl up there watching the game, making it like, hey, having need to challenge that. In his ear, don't do it. Don't do hey, it. Don't, don't do it. Don't, hey, don't, do don't it. challenge that. Just like you, me, the viewer watching at home, like, all right, oh, really yeah, shouldn't yeah, challenge no, no, no. that. Really shouldn't burn your last time out. And your last time out. A fumble that was never. When you're going losing, to get, right? I, it 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 was. I cannot believe a they escaped this game with a win. Okay. And b that. If they would have lost, he would have been under big time fire. So all all things considered, one, I think he still had some explaining to do when he got in the locker room. But uh, all things considered, how did the Rams win this game? Like how how'd they get it done then? Uh, to me, it's one. I mean, well, like as much as coaching one way with McVay made some errors, put his team in a bad spot. The fact that Debo Samuel didn't touch the ball in the fourth quarter is ridiculous. Sam Fran really doesn't have a great offense. We've been saying this. They rely heavily on the run. They rely even more on Debo Samuel, whether it's run or pass, right? 
So that was questionable. And they're not a high powered offense, right? They stick around in games. That's how they, that's been their formula. We're going to get the stop on D. And, and it was a low scoring game, and they just didn't score enough points to get it done. Like to me, the Rams didn't play great. I think both no, teams I don't think they did. in the no. AFC Championship played both played better than both teams in the NFC Championship did. I give you that. And that's as bad two- as what well, we just talked about. How KC didn't even play up to half of their potential for the yeah. past two rounds. You could say that too. Yeah, Buffalo probably. and Kansas oh, yeah. City as well. Oh yeah. yeah so, the, so, the, Rams, I mean, the Rams tried their best now to get away both of these teams. Yeah, now, now, what's concerning going into the Super Bowl, and we'll hit Super Bowl next week, so we won't talk about the game, is that they just won two ugly football games. Yeah. yeah. Now they they did earn the one against Tampa Bay. They tried to give it away, but, but their offense looked the good. Yeah. They earned it. Mm-hmm. This one, I'd be a little worried about. Now, you're going to the Super Bowl. That's in the past, right? But recent performance has been a little shaky for the Rams. Hey, it, it, it's To me, it comes down to taking advantage of opportunities. Yeah. Like a, game oh, boils, a game boils down to for a couple of opportunities you need to make, and San Fran didn't take advantage of the opportunities they have. Tart dry, and I don't – I know I know, no oh one's gosh, harder so on himself tough, than, than, than Tart is right now. But that it has to be mentioned, right? You you drop so it, and then Stafford rebounds, and the Rams go and kick a field goal and get points out of it. And then Jalen Ramsey drops a pick. That's enough. That's that's an opportunity to give. That's new life given to you. Jalen Ramsey should have taken this probably to the crib. Like that's new life to you, and then you punt it two two plays later. Like you that that's an opportunity that you have to take advantage of, and at least extend the drive. At least put you know give yourself a little bit more a better field position. You don't do anything with the ball, and you punt two plays later, and you know the, the game goes on. The Rams win it. So there's there's opportunities that the 49ers did, just and, didn't make, and, and that doesn't come out. Yeah, like and just small them. things like they had fourth and two at the Rams 45. They give the ball to Debo there. They're getting the first down. Yeah, and they take a delay do the, the, when they're not going to jump, and because Kyle Shanahan is afraid of Jimmy G in the fourth quarter, and I think that gets into Jimmy G's head, mm. and Jimmy G proves Kyle yeah. it's, it's like a self-fulfilling vicious, prophecy. Yeah, vicious cycle. And like, it, it's like, like I put, pulled up the stats for the fourth quarter of Sunday's game and the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, and they're roughly the same for Jimmy G. Three of nine, 30 yards a pick, versus three of 11, 36 yards and a pick. Yeah. I won't tell you which one's which because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they lost them both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in the six playoff starts that Garoppolo has, he has a 28 pass already in the fourth quarter. That's last among all quarterbacks with 30 plus fourth quarter passes since 1991. This is the guy you try to sell me on? That's the winner. winner. That's the winner. That's the winner. I don't think he's a good What I say? I say he's not a good quarterback, but he's a winner. He's a winner. Oh, he, let me ask you. I don't think he's he the can, only quarterback in the that. NFL right now with two Super Bowl rings. Like, 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 get, like, get out of yeah, here. Like, get out of Like, 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 wrap your head around it. Is that true? Wrap your head around it. When keeping it real goes wrong. When that's 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 Tom Brady's not the NFL anymore, technically. Uh, Jimmy G, look, here, here's, here's, does a winner, all you got to ask yourself. Does a winner with the game on the line throw the ball backwards okay. without looking at the receiver <laughs> to end the game on an interception? Uh, I, I, I'm going I'm I'm to defend Jimmy G on that play. It hit the guy in the hands. Don't. No, 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 no. Don't. It, he Don't. can't take that sack because it would be like fourth and like 30. He's got to do a desperation throw to hope it's incomplete so they can have – a shot. Right, he could have thrown it at that guy's feet, though. Yeah, but he's like That's falling down doing like it, a it, shovel. But, it's a but it, Jimmy G got him in that and, bad situation. And, 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 and here's I don't know why I'm about to defend him, but here's the thing: like, put yourself in that moment. You're trying to throw it like at like your your brain just automatically tries to throw it at something. So as you're falling, you see a body, so you just toss it in that. You direction. got Aaron Donald running that. Yeah, 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 and it just happened. <laughs> and you this threw is it too high this goes on maybe Shanahan more than it does Jimmy G. But okay, in that end of game scenario, we saw how the Chiefs handled it. You leverage. On two of your best players, we play Tyreek Hill, go deep, Kelsey fills in underneath, vice versa. You could do the same exact thing with Debo and Kittle to pick up easy yards, uh, I would have to assume. Now, maybe they were playing defense. I, that's just an, a, an assumption. Right, but right, I, right. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and it was, tough spot. But we, we know, we know Shanahan will we'll give instead Debo of, the ball. Instead of hating on everyone, we got to give flowers to Cooper Cup. Yes. Because okay. you could argue that if, they put that if the MVP was decided now, they'd give it to him. After how Rodgers played in mm-hmm. the playoffs mm-hmm. and Brady didn't. Stafford been playing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he had 11 catches, 142 yards, two touchdowns. And the Rams had 11 uh, third down conversions. Six of them were Cooper Cup catches. Get, get, get your best player the ball monsters. in the time. Yeah, get your best player the ball in the time. Absolutely monster. Now, good on Sean McVay for doing that. Get my best player the ball when it matters. But I, I, I do want to get back to the – like the, the Kyle Shanahan and Sean McVay point of, of them having terrible games, probably the one Sean McVay that was like the worst 
the worst performance, one of the worst performances I've seen from him. Just on nothing Thanksgiving. as bad as the Super Bowl he lost. I, that's true. That's true. But this, this was pretty bad. And then Kyle Shanahan on the other side too, because I remember going in, I was hype about this coaching matchup, right? And they proved me completely oh, they, wrong. I think. And I think they are, and I think most people would say so. They're the two best young coaches in the league. Yeah, and so that was just weird to see them just tripping yeah. over themselves going down the street. It's well, weird. what I will give McVay is, though, I, I think the Rams were ready to play football. The, the 49ers, maybe not so much. I think the Rams' defense is also something that we have to talk about because they shut down the probably the best rushing attack in the league. I know the Eagles were statistically – but when it all comes down to that, the 49ers probably had a better run game. They can do more things. They only had 50 yards rushing on 19 attempts. Yeah, That's 2.6 yards per carry. That's not good at all. And and we can wrap that in with Jimmy G, right? That, that game was still close. And no, Jimmy G didn't play well. But everything that had worked around him wasn't working around him anymore. And he still had a shot to come win yeah. the game. And I said in the group chat, like, Rams are playing – the run hard. They were filling, coming yeah. flying into those. They were they were going to smartly enough force Jimmy G to beat them, as you as you just said. Like I've seen, as play, we said on the podcast, guy can be running wide open. Jimmy G just cannot get him. Yeah, the I, I've seen playing the run, and I've seen assuming the run, and that that's just assuming you're going to run. You're literally going to have to beat us. We're not even gonna like. You know, we're not going to play smartly. I'm I'm shooting a gap if I see it. Make Jimmy G beat him. So, but before we move on. Who, who do we roughly think? Because this, this, we'll, this is how we'll get into it without getting to it. Who do we think deserves to win more? This is a, a little conversation we were having off camera before. Because I want Kyle to present this point. That's why I want to. I want to put Kyle on the spot. Okay. Well, but, but but who do we who do we think deserves to win this game more? Because it's the up and coming team, the young up and coming team who's looking to cement a legacy, and there's a bunch of veterans who it's a long time coming for them. So who do we think deserves it more? That's a weird question. The who, Rams who deserves to win. The, the Rams deserve to win. They, they knocked out the defending champions at the defending champions' house. I know they almost sure. blew it, but they they did that. Right. That's 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 huge respect. They went twelve and five. They won the hardest division in football, and they've had stretches this postseason where they were dominant against the Cardinals. They were dominant in the first three quarters of. All right, we're gonna move on now because, like we said, we're in the lull period. So. Good time to get into NBA talk, right? We really are neglecting the NBA this year, but the NFL has just been so football much better. It's been, it's been, it's been the last two weeks of football. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, why are we talking about the NBA? But here's here's for all your NBA fiends. Here's the NBA for you. So we're gonna we've taken a look at the Vegas like win projection totals at the beginning of the season, and we've identified some teams who are gonna blow out their win projection totals. The biggest winners, we'll call them, and then we have some teams who are, are projected right now to fall in very under that win projection, we're calling those the biggest losers. So we'll start on the winner's side. And a team that we've talked about before, we'll highlight them again. The Cleveland Cavaliers right now sitting at 31 and 20. Their over and under was 26 and a half wins. They've already beaten the over and under, you know, which is great, right? So they're on pace for 50 wins. That's a, that's a differential of plus 23 and a half wins. So the Cavs blowing out projections. And I mean, they, they have, I think, a great young core. People are talking about theirs. Garland should be like, have all-star considerations i wouldn't hate it to be honest i wouldn't hate it to be honest i love his his progression and how he's doing um they're the only team who has hit their win total or lost too many games to be able to do so in this season the only team that's qualified to do that so far so which is impressive for the Cavs, man for a team that was supposed and a team that has no colin sexton right now it's operating without their quote-unquote best young player not even that far over 50 percent of the season down already knocked that one out. Yeah. I mean, I don't think Vegas was wrong in projecting them there, but it speaks to how well the Cavs have played because we talked about them, what, two months ago now? And this was a team we thought were going to fall off. Mm-hmm. We made that breakaway video about Evan Mobley, Rookie of the Year. Well, yeah, Kate Cun- Cunningham's back there and he's hooping. Scotty Barnes at the time was still hooping in Toronto. And we are like, Mobley could win it. Well, now he's minus 250 to win Rookie of the Year. <laughs> I, I mean, doing this past Colin Sexton injury, Sexton only played 11 games. Didn't matter, right? Mm-hmm. That was supposed to be a one-two backcourt. It's really now just a one backcourt, but Rubio is so good. Yeah, but, yeah, it's, but it's, it's opened kind of, up the floor for Darius Garland. Yeah. Like, I'm saying like Rubio. Oh, oh yeah, but hurt. Yeah, yeah. Got, got hurt. Um, but just, just the way they've done it, I think the two bigs work. I think you go Mobley, Jared Allen. Not a lot of teams do that. That works. Mm-hmm. A young team, especially having athletic guys. I mean, Jared Allen somehow fell through the cracks. I know he probably had to get moved from the Nets to make that team happen. But people forget how dominant he was at shot blocking and being an athletic big. And now you get a guy in Mobley to go beside him who can also 
play the wing, who's a great passer for his size, very underrated. Can shoot the mid-range very well, working on the three ball, but he's hitting them. I mean, it's crazy that they're 11 games over 500, 51 games in the season. Lead the but, Houston point difference. But they have earned it. 11 and 4 in the last 15, keeping alive in a very gritty Eastern Conference. And and they they beat the Bucks on their home floor not too long ago, a couple of nights ago. And Giannis came to the postgame and was like, yo, this is a good team. This is not the Cavs that people are thinking of, the down and out Cleveland Cavaliers. This is a good basketball team. Like people like they need their respect. They're gonna be in the playoffs. Like it's time to start realizing that the Cavs are not a fluke this year. You know who also needs your respect? Kevin Love. I was about to say Yeah, K Love's still Kevin hooping on. Go ahead on. on. The first 16 games of the season are dropping 10 points per game and like four rebounds. And then you realize the Cavs were good and started to try. Yeah. And then he won't be there. And now and since then he's averaging 16 points, seven rebounds off the bench, and he's shooting 42% from three. He's uh, a great bench weapon for them when they have to take either Mobley or Allen out of the game. Mm. It's almost right. That's like when you talk about like finding added value in the middle of the season, we won't bring up another team that is suffering through that right now. Um, like having a guy like Kevin Love who, A, in the locker room can be a leader. He's a guy who's seen and done it all going to championship teams. And then on top of that, just as a fit, as a basketball player, he is the perfect piece. Like the perfect, perfect piece guy, coming yeah. in off the bench for what they're looking for, what they're looking to replace when they take Mobley uh, and Allen off the floor, maybe less so Allen, but definitely Mobley. And hats off to him. I think he's he is the favorite right now to win the Rookie of the Year, right? Minus, Minus 250. 250. Oh, yeah. uh, I, 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 I actually kind of, yeah, kind of would bet. I, I might bet on Cade right now. I, I, but I do think at the end of the day, that's just based on value. At the end of the day, I think Mobley has been the best one. Yeah, so, it's been great for him. Great season for them so far. Hopefully yeah. they can make a run. Well, great. Another team having a, a great season, the Phoenix Suns. I mean, it's it's crazy to go to the finals next year and then you're already smashing your win projection total this year. But best start in franchise history off to 41-9 and nine start. Their over and under was 51 and a half, so they're on pace for 67. That's a plus 15 and a half win differential. I mean, the Valley Boys are doing it, man. It, it's the fifth highest in the league, and they're the second best team against their win total. Very impressive. They're, they're, they're doing it as as the other top teams in the Western Conference are starting to take a little bit of a dive. You see the Warriors having a tough stretch. The Jazz have taken a nosedive. The Suns not only have stayed the course, but they've gotten better. It's it's mad impressive to see. Yeah, and Chris Paul's gotten better at this age. is insane. Is he leading the league in assists? If not, leading he's in assists, right and he's like second or third in steals. Yeah, it's nuts. And the first thing that you said, how – their win total going into the season was fifth highest, and they're smashing it. Like, the Cavs, yes, are great, but think about the Cavs win total versus the Suns. For the Suns to get an advantage on their total, they have to win, like, two games for every one game the Cavs win. Right. So so it's ridiculous <laughs> at that level. Um, we know Chris Paul's been great, which I know you might talk about more. That's awesome. I mean, Devin Booker's been about what you expect. It's been the other guys. Now, I think you go to the finals, you get that experience. It's done wonders for this team. Mikael Bridges, we knew was supposed to be like maybe Aiden's supposed to be the three, but Mikael Bridges is supposed to be a great starter for them, a great fill play, more than a three and D guy. Maybe not too much more, but if he's a three and D guy, should be the best three and D guy in the league. Mm -hmm. And he has stepped up in my eyes. Last year, I put a lot of stock in him that didn't work out. It worked out in a sense, but not where I thought he was. Now he's reaching the peak where I thought he was. Aiden's not making dumb as many dumb plays anymore. And when you have Chris Paul and Devin Booker. You can get away with a couple of dumb plays, and if you're stepping up with them, then you're going to be 41 and 9. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. To me, this is a, a big intangibles win. I think they're roughly the same team as last year, almost identical. Yeah. And Chris Paul was up 2 in the finals, and they lost it. And the, basically, the narrative was oh, they missed their shot. Mm -hmm. The league was injured around them. The Lakers will be back next year, and we'll go to the Lakers, and the Nets will be back. And Chris Paul said, I got a taste and I got close and I'm not, I got it. We're not done yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not done. And I just think that leadership and Devin Booker playing so great in the finals and just coming up through that just, just drive to like this, this anger that they didn't get it is just driving them to keep winning and winning and winning. And it, it just embodies a championship team. Yeah. And, and I think it's no, no coincidence that Devin Booker, like as they're playing this great stretch, Devin Booker has bounced back from that beginning of the season. What was that weird kind of start to the season he was having? I, I don't think he was right 
after that finals loss. He like, has that finals loss, and he goes. I know he wins a gold medal. He goes to Japan, has to fly on the on the plane next to, with two guys that he just lost to in the finals. Has a sluggish start to the beginning of the season, but has been ever has been great ever since. And in these past five games, has even been even better. Thirty three point six points per game, six rebounds, three assists, and a steal a game. Like he's been great, and and the Suns are you know on eleven game win streak, fourteen in the last fifteen. And this is what I mean. You guys mentioned Aiden, but you know he's been out for mm-hmm. time to time with, with little small out right now. Nothing, yeah, out right nothing, now. Nothing too major, but yeah, Devin Booker. I believe we could see uh, him take a step that Joel Embiid took last year is taking this year. In every single night, I'm going to come out and I'm a threat for a thirty piece every night, not okay. just the nights I get up, and not just the nights where it's like you know sometimes it's CP's night, sometimes it's Mikel's night, and there will be nights where that is the case. But going into a playoff series, you know, I think we're starting to see Devin Booker, and, and it's obviously a small sample size, but 33.6 points, 6.4 rebounds, 3.8 assists over his last five games, and those are MVP numbers. Yeah, for real. Another team that, that's doing really well, their last game wasn't a representation of it. I mean, it was still a great game, actually, against the Sixers in overtime. They lost, but the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, 35-18 and 18 right now, they're over under was 41 and a half. So they're on pace for 54 wins. That's a plus 12 and a half point uh, win differential. Um, I mean, we could encompass this in this right now, John Morant and and Desmond Bain. Desmond Bain, yeah. But John Morant. And and their last game was just a microcosm of their entire team where John Morant is just is going to have the most just calmest, but most electrifying 37. Desmond Bain sprinkles in his 30, you know, five threes. But I, I think... When this team wins is when Jaron Jackson is giving them that that extra push on offense. He didn't give it to them against Philly, and they lost the game. They were really carried by him, but that that's kind of the microcosm of their whole season. But they've been they've been great they, nonetheless. They remind me a lot of like almost what we expected the Dallas Mavericks to become over time with Luka Doncic as the guy. Then you also have Kristaps Porzingis, but the main difference is. You're getting contributions like Desmond Bain out of nowhere. This guy on any given night give you 25. He gave the Sixers mm-hmm. 34. I believe yeah, it was. something like that. Uh, career many. high. <laughs> and it's a great game, man. And like, I just think that overall we're seeing John Morant become like I, just so we mentioned with Devin Booker. Uh, this this, this team's going to go as far as Ja takes him, and I think that he can be a very real candidate for MVP this year. Fifth. Leading, like in terms of the odds, he's the fifth likeliest to win the award. Yeah. So that's saying something. You know what team this Grizzlies reminds me of? And I promise this is a compliment. It's oh. the Lowry, DeRozan, Raptors, where they're just. I wouldn't think of that as an insult. People, they get a bad rap because they got LeBron. Yeah, right, because they got LeBron. <laughs> but they're just this amalgamation of just like a bunch of really good players that play great together in a smaller market that just loves the team. Yeah. And they're just the perfect culture, and Morant fits that energy for the city perfectly. And and I've, Morant is going to be really fun to watch in postseason series as a favorite, just to see where that where and, that comes down for him. And I think that's a great point because what I'm so impressed with, with John Morant is he's showing me that he can do this consistently, like through the season, this young of an age. I mean, it's, you know, second, third year in the league, like it, it's it's. He's showing me that he can do this for a complete series. Even guys like Devin Booker, this young Devin Booker wasn't consistent. He'd give you 70 one night, and then he'd shoot 25% from the field the next night. You're like, okay, he can't do this for a series yet. Ja could do this for a series. Yeah. And I didn't think he'd be at this level this quickly. And then if you look, and I, and I kind of hate to do this, you know, bring one brother down to bring one up. But if you look at the number one overall pick in that draft, and, you know, people are kind of putting them, you know, head to head a lot. You got to be if you're the Pelicans looking at like it was clear it was these guys one or two and I chose I chose Zion like the, you were never that, not choosing Zion though really like, you're no, never you getting away from Zion yeah you were taking it's, Zion. it's just really just retroactive Zion was locked at in it. number one like two months if you told me Zion was going to play about one season in his entire four year contract <laughs> for me I maybe would have yeah Zion, I maybe would have picked Zion right. I guess that's time, a very that's a very hindsight look at, at things but I mean you just got to be kicking yourselves a little bit yeah right? no it's it's difficult I mean you also had an all star. Like Drew Holiday too at the time. Like I'm, I'm not looking at. They're gonna John have probably Rant, right? one last chance. I think. I, I he may just be gone. We don't have to go down this. I would right, be right, for right, a different on, episode. Let's, but let's one on thing down. I will bring up before we move on from the Grizzlies. Uh, I don't know if you guys have anything to say on, but yeah, 40 percent of their losses, forty percent of their losses are by over twenty points. 
that's like a we let go, huh? And not our night. Oh yeah, that worries me big time about yeah. going. You know, you're in the playoffs. You're you're having to battle. Things aren't going your way. You can't be dropping the. Vote. You can't fold. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah you can't you, fold like that. So that that's just a scary piece for me. Yeah, I'm impressed with Ja. I mean, you, it's hard not to be. What I will say is a team as a whole, though. I'm not saying we know what Ja is, but at this point, he's not going to be the one to make the deep playoff run. It's going to be the whole team together. Yeah. Because okay. this is a very deep team, to Matt's point about very good players. They're nine deep. Mm-hmm. And nine deep of players you want. I'm talking the starting five, De'Anthony Melton, Tyus Jones, Kyle Anderson, Brandon, Brandon, Clark. Brandon Clark. Yeah, Brandon yes. Clark gives them such I good mean, the, like nine guys who have now played with each other, all of them, I believe, besides Steven Adams, who's new this year, have all played each other for over a year now. Dylan Brooks still has only played about 20. I was about to say – 20 of their 50-something games. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's arguably the second-best player on the team. I think Jaron's back up to that point. But they're all very good. If Bain can keep shooting like this, if Ja keeps scoring like this, and you get a good night from Dylan Brooks or a good night from Jaron Jackson, right? You know Steven Adams is consistent in the paint. That's how this team will make a playoff run. Because yeah. they're a very good team. But to Jake's point, that does worry me a lot. Yeah. And I also don't think Ja can lead you through a playoff run. I think he can lead you through a playoff series, series like right, we right, talked right, about, about but he can't do it on a run. But, but this not is having, about overperforming expectations. Right, this and then is, they're doing yeah. that. The, the, oh. the, no, but, is, but, but, yeah, I, but so, I think it's fair. I think we're doing the Grizzlies justice by putting them in playoff talks. Because I'm not talking – the Cavs? Yeah, the Cavs are talking about, hey, whatever you do in the regular season. That's is found great. money. It, is it, hey, for the, for, the Grizz, for the Grizzlies, just doing it in the regular season is not good enough for this team. You are – playoff caliber so we're going to judge you to that bar and i think we're doing them justice and giving yeah. them respect but oh, and they're still very it. capable of and, doing and, it and yeah. to, to the losing by you know the the double digits getting blown out point end of the jaw not leading them they're doing this without dylan brooks a high energy guy a gritty guy like dylan brooks doesn't let you drop the rope and and i don't care how much we're getting beat by we're going to compete we're on this floor yeah. and that helps you because dylan brooks fills in a lot of those holes that help you in the playoffs yeah. those yeah. those you know, getting on the floor plays, those, the, the, doing the extra things. Like, Dylan Brooks will do that. Plus, we'll anchor up on the defensive He's, end. And that's like, the, that's and really, like, this is the guy that you really don't need, you know, really don't realize how necessary he is to you lose him. Yeah. The Danny Green, the Dario Saric, is like the, the guys who lose. Marcus Smart, that's who. He, he's, yeah. like Smart, he's like Marcus Smart. Like, yeah. what's the best Martin part Pat of Pat Dylan Brooks' game? It's his defense, especially mm-hmm. on this team. And that's Ooh. why they can make a run. Yeah. We're going to move to the teams who we thought were going to make runs. <laughs> And it's getting shaky, baby. And that's the biggest losers, the guys who are underperforming their win projections. Why not talk about them again? Why, I, why I not like talk about them again? Hate, man. <laughs> the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> why not? 24 and 27, they're over and under, was 52 and a half. So they're on pace for 39 wins right now. That's a, a minus 12 and a half. Under your win projection, Vegas ah, is making a lot of money on this. Ah, one. <laughs> it's ah, it, it is probably amplified because they're LA, but like just really any like highly billed superstar led sports team, there you you get so crushed and by the media got LeBron. and fans when you underperform and you have these three guys and you said you guys are the stupid ones, we're the smart ones, we put this team together and it's going to work and it. Doesn't especially, work at all. Especially when you try to shoot down the age thing, and all, and all, well, I guess everyone except Russ has gotten hurt. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, we say y'all are old, but for reference for this whole thing, the Lakers and the Knicks right now have the same record at this point in the NBA season, and that should make every Lakers fan tremble right now. Yeah, they've way should. way less payroll, way less uh, Hall of Famers on that squad. Yeah, way less good things going on. Way less young talent to build around <laughs> yeah, because way, it's not your year. Yeah. <laughs> the Lakers' number one problem. And he's having an okay season, uh, that being AD. But Anthony Davis cannot be the best Anthony Davis with Russell Westbrook. Um, And then beyond that, both of them individually are not having good years for what they are. So when you look at Russell Westbrook, um, he's kind of been built, you know, Mr. Triple-Double. He's a guy who racks up assists, but we've always said he's a guy who chases assists and isn't necessarily the most conducive to team basketball. That's proven this year. They are. They have eight percent less uh, assists when Russell Westbrook is on the com- court compared to when he is off of it. AKA the ball moves more. <laughs> exactly, AKA the, ball the ball keeps moves more. moving yeah. and finds open hands compared to Russ Iso Ball, and uh, they're two two points worse in offensive rating with him on the court. Translate to Anthony Davis as well. 
They are 5.7 points better with AD off the court this year compared to when he's on it. Um, in offensive rating, that can be a skewed stat. I don't want to put everything into those stats and say these guys aren't good. But, we, but, but the, eye test, a, the eye test kind of like aids these stats. The right? flag pops up. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone talks about how their offense doesn't make sense, and they're right because it doesn't. Mm-hmm. But what also happens when you get a bunch of old vets together to be friends is none of them want to play defense. Uh, yeah, and they're maybe. 27th in the NBA in points allowed per game. Like They're just like, ah, oh, someone else pick them up. Oh. And we know what LeBron does in the regular season on defense because he saves himself for the playoffs. But AD, ever since they won the chip, has just kind of been coasting yeah. on de- defense. He was a defensive player of the year. He was and he was so good defensively in New Orleans. And now he's just kind of like, eh. and, and And I don't think it was a coincidence that when he got to Lakers, LeBron was captaining him to be defensive player of the year because he's like, hey, you going to have to do it on defense, big man. Like, I'm not going to do it. Like, you have to do it on defense. And you can tell that it's a little bit of lacking because in the big matchups, I watched the game against Philly, against Embiid. He had a really good – it was like the – He knew it was national TV. Exactly. (laughs) A national TV against one of the best players at a similar position. People say he's not a center, but – you know, like, it is it is an effort thing for a lot of the guys on that team. And, and it's not just AD and Russ. You go down, Avery Bradley has not been good when he's been put out there. A lot of the – Carmelo Anthony has not been great when he's been put out there. It it, it could really, Shaky, really come off. Baby. The wheels are right, We don't have to spend too much time braiding Lakers, one, because I'm pretty sure we'll get back to it again at some point in the NBA season. But as Russ likes to say, get in the playoffs and my record is 0-0. Zero and zero. Sure. Sure. Yeah. You get in the seventh or eighth seed, you get pummeled. You better like, get whatever, there. For whatever. Le, Le crypto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your sure. team together. Uh, we're going to move on to the Indiana Pacers because this one kind of disappoints me. I'm like The Pacers for the past, what, three, four, five years have always been not the, the best team, but not a bad team. They've always been a, a playoff team. Always, always a solid. playoff team. Always gritty. Always fighting. They're 19 and 33 this year. Their over-under projection was 42 and a half. So they're on pace for 30 wins. That's a minus 12 and a half win projection. And that's just, just disappointing. Fourth fourth worst points per game allowed in the East. They've never been a crazy scoring team. But, you know, the, to see the Pacers pretty much not have this life, I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised because a month and a half ago, they are ready to blow this entire thing up, right? And I guess they still are. Trade deadline a week away. But they, they're going to make a move. They're going to make a move, like right? So, so, so they're ready to. I mean, I, I got a lot of respect for Rick Carlisle. And it just, does, he just doesn't seem like you talk about it doesn't seem like he really, like, cares. Like, it seems like he's kind of just, you know, yeah, it is what it is. We are who we are at this point. Um, it's just kind of, you know, disappointing to see what what's going on with the Indiana Pacers. Yeah, it's right now. weird. I, like I always felt like this team was uh, not deep, but always really had guys they Talent, can rely yeah. on off the bench. Uh, that's not been the case this year. I mean, you have Sabonis, Brogdon, Duarte, and Turner, and that's about your whole team. And like Justin Holiday looks. Whatever. He's off the bench, but he's actually looks as good as he looked last year. But yeah. everyone else is really taking a step back. I like Malcolm Brogdon, but besides a stretch of games he had in December, it really hasn't been the same. DeMontis Sabonis has really not been the same. And I mean, Miles Turner, you know you get on defense, but it's at the point where he needs to give you more on offense now. And, and he's shown like, stretches where he's been really disgruntled with the team, too. He had yeah. that little, little couple, you know, two, three-week stretch where he just wasn't playing, wasn't showing any effort out on the floor. Like, it, it's that, that's not what I'm used to seeing no. from the Indiana Pacers. They have been hurt. They've been and that, yeah. crazy hurt. To me, that's, that's like where it comes down to. And you can tell because on the defensive end, they're, they've been fourth worst in the East in terms of points allowed per game. And when you don't have – lineups that can gel together for one reason or another. A lot of times it's, you know, when you read off guys who have missed over 10 games, Malcolm Brogdon's missed 24, O'Shea Brissett, who plays a good chunk of minutes for them, 12, Turner's missed 10, Levert 15, Jeremy Lamb 15, McConnell's going to miss the whole year. So, like, it's just very difficult to build a base and, and kind of ascend when you are having guys come in and out of the lineup all the time. You don't know if you're going to be on the team in a week. It, I, I would say if they can stabilize after the trade deadline, they're a team who could sneak into the back end of the playoffs. They I, also, can't, I, I can't see it this year. They have no closer, and and their actual their point differential is not bad, but they're two and thirteen in games decided by four points or less, mm-hmm. which is astonishingly horrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's just they don't have anyone to go to the because they're just a bunch of like 
decent guys. And, yeah, but they but they've always been that. But they but to Kyle's point, they've always found themselves in the playoffs. They've never had a, an amazing guy. Sabonis has been their best player. Sabonis is taking a for the for the past like five years. Back, though. Like, so he, he is has, taking he a legitimate step back. Yeah, he was I mean, all he was a I wasn't legitimate gonna, I'm not gonna say he year. was gonna transcend, but the past two seasons he gave us compared to this season, it, like that. you can just see it on the floor. He's not as good as he, he was. He was a legitimate all-star last year. And of the guys we've named that missed over ten games, DeMontis Sabonis' his name was not in there. So it's not injury that's been out of it, him and out of the lineup. He's been only the the only mainstay guy. And at the very least, if you're a good player, my team might sting, but I'm I'm gonna get these points, I'm gonna get these buckets, and he's yeah. not. He's not doing that. They're really like the only team that's going to get forgot about this year. Yeah. Like you look at the playoffs and maybe a team might miss the playoffs, but the Pacers have really gotten just like forgot about. Yeah. Ah, I got a team that you might have forgotten about coming up next because they've been really bad too. Yeah. And a, and a guy who's kind of fading out. He's been really bad too. The Portland Trailblazers. You want to talk about what is going on? Oh, no. Oh, no. 21 and 30. Their over-under projection was 44 and a half. So they're on pace for 34 wins right now. Minus 10 and a half under their win projection. Like, you, 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 I'm going to be honest. Kate Pasa. I haven't watched. <laughs> I don't know if I've watched more than like three minutes of Blazers basketball. Really? <laughs> really? Well, there's not, there's, that, there hasn't been a reason to. <laughs> Damian, and, most of the time, it's just Damian Lillard giving you a reason to. He's not even and giving Lillard, you a reason to. I think, Anthony uh, Simons uh, is the reason to watch him. Yeah. He's, uh, uh, my, my, he's been good. If you're a the, real deep basketball fan, yeah, Simon. Really, I, 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 Lillard, I, my, just from looking at the stats, it just seems like he's a guy just going through the motions because his stats are off 40% from the field, 32% from three. That's just a guy begging to get traded yeah, or just, just kind of like he's kind of just bored of the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and in like, I, it, you don't have to be a basketball player to understand what's going on there, right? Like, let's say you're good at your job. And the management and the synergy of the company is off. Messed up things are happening. When things start to go a little, all oh, things are tough. Like now, more that time more than ever is when you throw your hands up. Like, oh, it's yeah, there's no fight. Yeah, it's there, like you know what? It's, no it's beyond me at this point. And it is. They should blow that. They should have blown the Damian Lillard shot. In retrospect, over Paul George, may be the worst thing to ever happen to them mm. since Greg Oden. Could easily be because if that doesn't go in, you get bounced from the playoffs. You can get off Dame or CJ or that build of team sooner. You get more out of Dame. And if you want to go this route, you could have went the OKC route and you would already be halfway built back by now. So, like, I, it's just a really so tough you're, situation. You're, you're saying the Damian Lillard shot started, and I like whoever put this in the script. I like this, and we're saying it out loud. It started the treadmill of yeah. mediocrity for the Blazers. Correct. And they who put it. that? In, who put it in there? That was me. That was you. Is that is that what you're talking about? Is that what this is? The and treadmill Pacers are of kind of on it too. Low key, Pacers are yeah, always been on. always been on. Um, what I will say, the difference is with them and the Pacers is, I, I think the Pacers actually have a bad team. Well, right, there's no star. There's no superstar. There's a superstar yeah. the on Trail, Portland. Trail Blazers have their best two players either missing a lot of time or not playing well. Because I've actually three too. I've Nurkic past three years yeah Nurkic, i yeah, guess yeah. he's he's never been like offensive yeah but you're it's right also he's good you're right um yeah. but but I, I mentioned simons i've also been really impressed with norman powell who's low-key having a career year and playing very well i mean they have the pieces to where if dame and cj are playing like dame and cj this team is good like like back to the playoffs not a not a playoff run or anything but that really hasn't been them at all besides no. the one year they made it to the western conference finals I mean, it, uh, Nas Little has taken a step up. I mean, like around they them has been good. They made the good. Western Conference Finals because the I, yeah, no, Rockets no. were playing the Warriors in the second round. Yeah, I know that's that's <laughs> still more proving my point that like the, the, they've never really made it a playoff run. Yeah, but it, like it, I don't know. The Dame's playing bad. He wants out. I, I think that's clear and, now. I, it's not. I, they're actually still only like four and a half games back at the playoffs. I don't see them getting. They're there. in the. Um, Playing, the playing game. Yeah, I don't see them getting I there, mean, but I mean, if, if for some reason they have a miraculous turnaround, they're still beat to win a playoff series. There's, they're there's built. writing on. I mean, they're seeing the writing on the wall, and then there's literally writing on the wall. And I think Dame is legit writing him, like writing on the wall himself. I, I am done. I want to go. It's over because he's he's trying to be as as gangster as possible about it. Not actually say it, you know. To the public, I'm gonna stand behind my guys and stand behind my city. I'm gonna go out there and play. But, but, but come on, brother! Like if we can see it now, and it, and it translates to even like on paper, yeah. like we can see it. Since like, the jump of the season, too. Like, like, like he got like, off slow. He hasn't done. Eh. You're not saving face if you're not performing on the on the court as Ready? well, man. I'm gonna float this. You can tell me if I'm crazy. I am crazy, but who says no? 
Damian Lillard. Here we go. For Zion Williams, who says no? Kyle, who says no? Do you want to get? Do you want to get to who winners and no? losers? Do you want to? Who says no? I don't hate it. I thought he was going to say Ben Simmons. I thought, no, you, I thought not, you were going to bring the Sixers go into it. No, I'm not going to. I don't you hate don't it. hate the it? The Pelicans say no. no yeah, they, they can't do anything with Lillard at this point. Like, Lillard mm-hmm. is 31. Will they be good enough in three years to do anything? Okay, so ready. Yeah. This is, they this have is, J-Val. They have Brandon Ingram. They have Josh Hart. You the Pelicans have are perennial. Fun. Yeah, but they always have decent players and never are good. Yeah, but I think, like, better than They could have three all-NBA players on that team. If you if you bring in Dame, I mean theoretically, if you if you have Zion back, but Zion's not coming, like whatever. This is probably for a different episode. You're right. You're right. I, I, <laughs> think, that I think both teams might slightly benefit, well, but I, but I think Zion's that. price is higher. I think you can yeah. get more that fits your team better for Zion. But I also you're, you're like right. Dame on the Pelicans. I like, like the thought of that. Like Portland would do it. Portland should do it. I don't know if they would. Oh, they would. Ah, I see. I do uh, like. I mean, I think Dame would benefit from money playing with a really work. good big man, and yeah, we know Zion's JV would benefit from playing NBA, with a good big man. What's up? <laughs> you, like, you, what's up? <laughs> you love JV. You didn't get to talk about JV getting oh, robbed from far, I did far. Yeah, they get, robbed JV. <laughs> JV should get be you. on a run. Uh, all right, yo, I like this episode or this segment. We're bringing this one back. Uh, winners and losers, Kyle. Yeah, we're gonna keep it short. A fun one. We got one winner, one loser. One we gotta get to, but the first one, loser, football teams, more specifically. The football team, yeah. which is no longer a thing. I mean, the NFC East team from Washington is now known as the Washington Commanders. <laughs> Yo, shout out, shout out to my man CJ if he's if he's listening this deep into this episode because as soon as he heard the Washington Commanders, he, he said, "I'm clowning all 2022." He's like, uh, "That's just the worst." I saw a call on Twitter say you you should have just kept football team at that right. point. Like, I'm, oh, I'm I was cracking up, man. I think uh, yeah. Commanders is just like. Uh, no, this little, little I this little giant name. Commanders this, this, is, this, this, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember PMYC? No, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. if, if the Chargers became the Chargers, I would be clowning them for like being an iPhone. Charger. If there was a, if there was like, a, if there was a, a bunch of team names are stupid. Their team nickname f- is going to be the Commies. Oh, if there <laughs> was a, red and yellow. If Communist, there was a football, bro, if there was a football <laughs> version of High School Musical, like the they, it would be the it would be the Commanders. If there was a football version of High School Musical, like they would be the Black Jersey's cool. Uh, but the jerseys still look super generic. Now, I, now let me we'll bring see this what they up. look like in person. Let me bring this up. I 100% could believe that Snyder did this out of out of sure like pettiness. Like, okay, you want me? You want me? You want to rename the team? And now you're forcing me to pick a name because I do think the NFL was leaning on him to pick a name. Hard to get merch off when it says football team on it. Like you, you can't need, trademark it. You can't. You can't I'm do like, anything yeah, with I that. I liked football team better. Like, 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 I 100% believe Dan Snyder would do this out of out of just. Pettiness. To like, be honest, like, oh, I'm going to make up that corny the, name. I just got the reason my football team's not better is because when you say, oh, who's coming up, who are we playing week seven, you don't say, you can't say the football team. Yeah. You have to say the Washington, which is just, if you, who are we playing week seven, the commanders. Like, you can. There's only one it, football team. Commanders. Yeah. It's not good, Ugh. but it's not terrible. Well, it's right. the most bland, they generic made, name ever. They crazy. made the classic mistake of trying to. Make a big serious decision in the day of social media. You're always getting that's clout. true. Yeah. All right, Very we gotta run quick to the loser. Uh, well, that was the loser. <laughs> All right, run quick. The to winner is Tom one. Brady, and duh. I mean, he's the most winning player in NFL history. We got to talk about him. He announced his retirement, obviously, officially this time. Adam Schefter jumped a gun, and uh, everyone knows that by now. So I'm gonna give the Buccaneers fan a short amount of time, about the same amount of time Brady spent in Tampa Bay, to say whatever he has to say. Oh, and, good one, and then man. We'll, and then we'll that chip was a good in. One. I mean, look, I have no problem, and I don't think people should, with calling Tom Brady a Buccaneers legend, a, 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 a Buccaneers icon, the Buccaneer Tom Brady, even though it was very short-lasted in, in Tampa Bay. I wasn't prepared for him to leave this soon, especially going out with maybe you know going to be the MVP with leading the league in, in yards and TD passes. Um, but, I mean, which is what an accomplished career. Like, he brought my team in, in one season – something that we hadn't sniffed in 18 years. And so for him to, to come and do that in one season, like I, I can't be mad that he left earlier than expected. I can't be, you know, upset with this decision. And when you start hearing things from Tom Brady, like I'm satisfied or like, it's time for me to focus on you no know, being a dad and being a husband, that stuff that is, is not changing in his mind. That stuff that, you know, he's, he's ready to move on to the next chapter in his life. So I, I'm, Incredibly grateful for him coming, incredibly sad for him leaving, and I'm incredibly scared for the state of my football team. Good luck. Be- because 
yo, I'm not ready to. I'm not ready to see a bad football team again. I'm not. They're like, I, I watch. I w- They'll be above average, but not much better. The NFC South oh, is really? horrible, so you got to. Oh yeah, we're, we're automatically like one of the worst divisions of football. That dude's locked up all across, you all across the board. except Chris Godwin. You know, it's a crazy stat from Brady. It's not really a stat, but like some that's crazy that I just learned. He's only missed 19 games in his whole career. He missed 11 or 15 to a knee injury all of the 2007 season, I believe, or 09. 08. Well, 08, they won this. They lost Super Bowl. No, 07. Okay, so I count that as 08 because Super Bowl was in there. But yeah, 08 season, and then four games to the the Flakey suspension. Yeah. He played every single game outside of that, was 200 something and like 70 something. I mean, it's going to be crazy. Like, literally a goat. Yeah. It's so, Matt. Let me hear you say it. Let me hear you say it. He's the goat of quarterbacks. Matt, like what? Like it's unbelievable. Who, it's it's, it's unbelievable. Jerry, uh, Jerry Rice is the goat to me. The asterisk that he finds seven, somewhere in it every single seven time. Super Bowls. That's a team stat. It's it is yeah. like that's uh, madness. It's like it's, getting it's madness, madness of the same Technique. magnetism. Saying to Jerry touch. Rice is the goat is not happen. madness. No, it's that's actually ex- it's actually that's not madness. That's not madness. That's, but not that's madness. actually the first time. It's I've actually, heard, I've actually the first time I've heard you definitively say that. Hey, I know. Hey, about, oh, I've been it's Jerry, actually something Jerry. I like maybe technically believe, but the way he said it, like, it's like also, the goat of QBs. Kyle, 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 we've been doing this podcast for it's going on three years now. What have no, you? I, when have you, Jay, heard him say that Jerry Rice is ever ever? People have been saying like, oh, Brady's the we had a whole episode on this, and it's just like, oh God, like. What I Matt, like, Matt, like, Matt, we had an entire episode on this exact discussion, and you never once said Jerry Rice's name. But we were talking about quarterbacks. Oh, but th- he's going to talk about Peyton Manning. Winner. Okay, I'll shut down. Winner. Most winningest player in the NFL, undoubtedly. Yes. And retiring and is going to still be a winner because his wife is a supermodel. He's winning. He's and won. a billionaire. He's won. So. It's won. Yeah, it winner, winner in football and winner in life. So The game is over. Congrats on your retirement, Tom Brady. And now let someone else win. Be happy, happy that someone else is gonna. Yeah, someone else gets. Well, we beat him, so that's true. All right, we got to move through this quickly, but we can get some shots about the buzzer as we always do. Who's got something to say? The buzzer before we run Uh, out. Just really quick, because I'm gonna mention it. Maybe in a YouTube video, maybe next episode. But uh, we gave out before the year our favorite three bets for the year. I had the Rams winning the NFC. I think it was like plus eight fifty. That came home, and then I put some real money um, on Rams to win the Super Bowl. Gonna make out nicely there too. So I hope you guys. Road ride with him, us. ride with him. And uh, if not, there's always going to be more opportunities down the road to do so. So Love hop it. on. Oh, I'll bounce off that point. That'll be on the Straight Facts YouTube channel. So there get in YouTube, there. Straight man. Facts Bang. YouTube. We are on the road to what our goal was, 100 subs. That's the yeah. first goal. Every every mountain has every mountain has uh, some milestones there in it. Go. And 100 is our next one. And appreciate you guys for tuning in. And Want winners? Jake just gave you. I was about to say, like, if you, you, we got winning tickets over here. Jake what else gave you to I just want to say, I'm really hoping this Brian Flores stuff uncovers the mold that's been sitting behind the walls of the NFL yeah. for years, because it's honestly just absurd. <laughs> the bull, the bull, the bull that black coaches go through in the NFL, yeah. and it's just, I, I'm really rooting for him. Yeah, Me too, because yeah. I like. It could cost them a future job. It, it, too, it probably it, and it probably will. Yeah. And, and and I'll say it quick because I, I don't want to get too deep into this. It's not what we do on this podcast, but there is something to be said for how courageous and necessary it was that Brian Flores did. It's why I'm completely behind him. Because for the longest time, when someone brings up race in the NFL, they bring it up and there's no one to blame, there's no one to answer to, there's no one to call to. And what Brian Flores and Colin Kaepernick did too, which is why that was also so crazy. Is is it? It made people like stand up and, and face somebody. Like I am actually accusing you of a certain situation, right, a direct. particular like case that it happened, and you have to answer as to why it happened and why it will never happen in the future. And like, and that that's why it's it's so big and so necessary. Kyle, not probably going to cost him a job. Like, yeah, I, think no, I think it will. It will cost him a job in the NFL. But like he said on Get Up on Wednesday morning, like. I need change, or, or the NFL needs change. This needs to no longer happen. So I, I'm, I'm with him. Um, I, I'm just, you know, it's, 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 it's so, it's so much to take in at one time. But it, it once again highlights a problem that everybody knows. But now Brian Flores is going after a particular situation, and I heard a lot of people talk about the timing of it, of it being a, a bad time for him to bring it up. But I don't think there's ever a bad time to bring something like this up. 
And he he'll should, always say it's about time. Yeah, and, and he shouldn't have to wait till the very end of the entire coaching hiring process to point out a specific situation. That's why there's never a bad time to do it because he's talking about one particular instance, not just the whole phenomena of it. So just more proud of Brian Flores. I hope much more things start to get uncovered through this whole process. But that's all the time we have for this episode of Straight Facts. It was a good one. Hit a lot of topics on this one. So shouts out to everyone, all of our viewers for, for staying locked in with us. Also shout out to the Up On Game Presents Network. And shout out to my three guys for Jake Galley, Kyle Sirik, and Stat Matt Robinson. I'm James Jackson. These have been the facts. Straight up. Oh, that's great. Wow. Hey,